SpaceX has successfully launched its Transporter 3 mission carrying 105 small satellites into orbit. The satellites will begin being deployed about one hour after launch and should take about 30 minutes. SpaceX is preparing another one of its Falcon 9 rockets to launch 105 small satellites into space this morning, January 13th. The launch, a two-stage Falcon 9 rocket flight called Transporter 3, is scheduled to take off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Liftoff is expected to take place during a 29-minute long window that opens at 10.25 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Perched atop the 230-foot-tall or 70-meters launcher as part of the company's third dedicated rideshare mission are dozens of small satellites from a variety of customers. Acting as a cosmic taxi service, the passenger satellites tucked inside the rocket's nose cone will be deposited into orbit. But what is the effectiveness of this mission? Hello and welcome to Elon Musk Daily. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell to get updated with technology trends. We bring you the video related to launching of dozens of satellites on a Transporter 3 mission by SpaceX. So stick till the end. A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket launched over a hundred satellites into space on a dedicated rideshare mission called Transporter 3. The Falcon 9 rocket took to the skies at 10.25 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or 15.25 UTC, January 13, 2022, from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. It was the company's second flight of the year, with up to 40 more planned over the next 12 months. This third transporter rideshare mission launched spacecraft for Kepler, Guardian, ExoLaunch, Nanorax, Satellogic, and Spaceflight, along with dozens of other payloads. A total of 105 satellites were lofted into a sun-synchronous polar orbit for SpaceX's small sat rideshare program. Transporter 3 is also launching 44 Super Dove satellites, an improved version of the Dove satellite with increased camera resolution, which is part of the planet's SkySat constellation. The improved satellites with the upgraded camera, increased quality, capability, better color and imaging, contributing to improvements and applications in agriculture and farm equipment utilization on Earth. The mission also includes small microsatellites and nanosatellites for commercial as well as government customers. All of the spacecraft were deployed within about 90 minutes of liftoff. Onlookers would be in for a treat, as this mission is the first since June to feature a return to launch site or RTLS landing, meaning that the rocket will touch back down in Florida at the Cape. Sonic booms are expected to crackle overhead as the rocket makes its way back to terra firma. Typically, SpaceX lands the majority of its rockets on the deck of one of its massive drone ships. That's because it takes more fuel reserves to return to land than it does to touch down on the deck of a drone ship. The flight marks the second mission of the year for SpaceX and the first land landing at the Cape since last summer. The Falcon 9 will fly on a unique path, a southerly launch trajectory that's rare for flights out of the Cape. As such, the Falcon 9 may be visible from the ground. The company sent out an email advisory on Wednesday, January 12, advising local residents of the expected booms. About eight minutes after liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage will land on SpaceX's Landing Zone 1, or LZ-1, at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Florida. The advisory said, There is the possibility that local residents and those of the surrounding counties may hear one or more sonic booms during the landing. SpaceX added that what residents hear will depend upon weather conditions. Missions like this, which carry payloads from different customers, allow multiple clients to share the cost of the rocket. Typically, satellites that fly on transporter missions are picky when it comes to desired destinations. However, if they need a more refined orbit, they can either wait for a transporter mission that has an orbit close to their needs, or they can choose a different launcher. SpaceX kicked off its rideshare endeavor in 2018 with the launch of 60 small satellites for a mission called SSOA. Blasting off from California, this flight allowed SpaceX to deliver a small armada of satellites into low Earth orbit. Each one released as part of a carefully choreographed orbital ballet, timed just right so that the satellites did not collide with one another. With the success of that mission, the company decided to make its transporter rideshare service available, offering payload rides on a Falcon 9 for $1 million a pop. Each payload is required to weigh in at 440 pounds, or 200 kilograms or less, and travel to a sun-synchronous orbit. The launch slots are booked through the company's website and are offered at regular intervals approximately three to four times per year. The first of these cosmic carpools, called Transporter 1, launched in January of 2021, 
with 143 tucked inside the rocket's payload fairing, setting a new record for the number of satellites carried by a single rocket. SpaceX followed that success with Transporter 2 mission in June, launching 88 small satellites. All three missions have featured a rare RTLS landing. If everything goes as planned on Thursday, Transporter 3 will mark the 21st successful touchdown of a first stage booster here at the Cape. Overall, it will be the 102nd landing for SpaceX, the most having occurred at sea. Currently, weather forecasts predict a 70% chance of good conditions for the launch opportunity today, with the only weather concerns being the potential for cumulus clouds and thick clouds over the launch site. There is a backup launch time on Friday if need be, with conditions improving to 90%. SpaceX's rideshare program aims to enable frequent and economical access to popular orbits like SSO, while also providing schedule flexibility to the customers. It costs as low as $1 million for a 200-kilogram payload headed to an SSO. On board this mission is a plethora of small satellite payloads. Most notably from Planet Inc., the Earth observation company has scheduled 44 SuperDove satellites to launch as part of their SkySat constellation. Kepler Communications is also launching six of its communication satellites as it aims to deliver networks all over the globe using small satellites in orbit. Campella is launching additional satellites to grow its constellation of very high-resolution, low-latency Synthetic Aperture Radar or SAR satellites in orbit. Umbra Space is launching its second commercial SAR satellite, Umbra-02. Alongside Umbra SAR-2001, launched on the previous transporter mission, the company plans to establish its own SAR constellation of 24 such satellites. Spaceflight was originally planning to launch 13 co-manifested payloads. Ten of those payloads were planned to be deployed by their newly developed Chemical Propulsion Orbital Transfer Vehicle, or OTV, Sherpa LTC-1. However, during integration of the spacecraft with SpaceX hardware, a propellant leak was discovered from the Sherpa propulsion system. There was no damage to the spacecraft on board the OTV, but the company decided not to fly it on Transporter 3 out of an abundance of caution. Italy-based launch integration company D-Orbit will launch five CubeSats. Three of them will be launched on Poland-based company Sat Revolution, and the other two for Ace Tech Space and Czech Aerospace Research Center, or VZLU. VZLU, in partnership with Space Maniac, will launch the VZLU-SAT-2 satellite to verify technologies for a future Czech satellite constellation. Alongside an experimental camera and attitude control system, there are second-generation devices on board that have already been tested on board the VZLU-SAT-1 spacecraft, launched back in 2017. This payload was earlier scheduled to be launched aboard Spaceflight's Sherpa but was then integrated at the last minute as the company teamed up with D-Orbit. That said, this is it for today's video. So what is your take on this matter? Tell us in the comments. If you want to see our upcoming videos, ring the bell icon, and don't forget to like our video as well. That's all from my side. Thanks for watching.